There was an apostasy from the truth, a falling away, just as Paul had prophesied. And when all the apostles died, the church lost its original organization, and the keys of the kingdom of God on earth. So where do we search for the truth now, Robert? I don't know. But the scriptures are clear. There must be prophets and apostles. Consider Amos. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Yes, yes, but preacher says that with our greater faith today, such men with their miracles, well, they're just not needed anymore. They were for the dark ages of the world. And I say, give me the dark ages of the world. Give me those times when men were guided by the prophets and apostles who received revelation from the Almighty. I believe the Lord God will soon raise up a people and a church with prophets, apostles, and all the gifts, powers, and blessings which it ever contained in any age of the world. It is for that church that we must seek, one with the same organization as in Jesus Christ's day. And what if such a church doesn't exist? Uh, then we must pray the Lord will show us the way, Asmon. Well, rain seems to be letting up. I, I must have a Thank you for dinner. It was lovely. We must continue our conversation later, in fact. Goodbye, Wilfred. Goodbye. Robert Mason. He's a good friend, but he has strange ideas. Who would believe such things? I believe him. Scriptures indicate that God created man in his own image. God has no body like you and I. How else could he be everywhere and nowhere at the same time? Moses said he talked with God face to face. But you teach that God is a spirit. God is a spirit. These things in the Bible must be understood spiritually, not literally. Jesus taught, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Surely he meant this literally. Why do you not preach the doctrine of baptism as Jesus Christ did? Young man, we live today in a glorious blaze of gospel light. Such doctrine is unnecessary. Excuse me. And what else? Unnecessary. For the Lord himself was baptized. Everyone seems to have their own system of spiritualizing the scriptures to make them bend to their own views. Where is the truth? Why is there so much confusion? The Spirit of the Lord impels me to relate something to you. A vision I had many years ago. One day, I was working in my field when I was carried away by a vision. I found myself in a vast orchard of, of fruit trees. I became hungry and searched for some fruit to eat but I found none. While I stood in amazement, finding no fruit in the midst of so many trees, they began to fall as if torn up by a whirlwind. I gazed upon it with delight, but as I was about to eat it, the vision closed. I didn't taste of the fruit. I never tasted of it. I, 
I knelt down to inquire of the Lord as to its meaning. In answer, I heard the voice of the Lord. What did the Lord say to you? The Lord said unto me, the great trees of the forest represent the generation of men in which you live. There is no church of Christ upon the earth in your generation. But in the next generation, I, the Lord, will set up my kingdom and my church upon the earth. And the fruits of the kingdom shall again be found in all their fullness upon the earth. You will live to see the day and handle the fruit but you will never partake of it in the flesh. Now listen to me, Wilford, for the Spirit of the Lord bids me say this to you. I shall never partake of this fruit in the flesh, but you will, so seek for it, Wilford. Listen to this. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Yes, I know the scripture. I want to get baptized. I must try to live according to the knowledge that I have. But you've already I been know, baptized. I know, I know that Reverend Holly baptized me as an infant. But I find no scriptural support for that practice. Instead, I find considerable evidence for baptism by immersion. And I feel that I must be properly baptized to be saved. I commend you for your decision. Tell me, why have you decided upon our faith? There are many others. Well, I believe baptism to be essential to salvation. The Bible indicates that Jesus Christ and his followers were baptized by immersion. Some seem to think this is unnecessary or have changed the ordinance. I intend, however, to follow as closely as I can the example of the Savior. Excellent. Shall we enter the waters? There is one thing, Reverend. Come. There is no need for reticence. The water is not overly cold. Though I thank you kindly for your performance of the ordinance. You must understand... I will not be joining your congregation. What? I do not believe it conforms with Christ's church as found in the Bible. But, but I thought... You perform baptism as found in the Bible, but where are your apostles and prophets? You lack the organization of Christ's church, and some of your doctrines do not match what I find in the scriptures. <laughs> Am I to understand that you wish me to baptize you? but that you refuse entrance into the kingdom of God. It is God's kingdom I seek, Reverend. But the Bible persuades me that your church is not it. Sir, would you have the damnation of a willing soul upon your conscience? And no man taketh dishonor unto himself, but he that is called of God as was Aaron. You think Reverend Pippin didn't have the authority to baptize me? Aaron received his authority by the laying on of hands by a prophet of God. Hey, Reverend Pippin. Don't forget your lunch. 
It's your favorite. <sighs> Without the authority, how then would he be saved? Are we, are we damned, Asman? We have traveled 60 miles, and this is the first place at which we've been impressed to stop. We have come to proclaim that the true church of Jesus Christ has been restored to the earth. Oh, please come in. I'm sorry you missed them. Who's that? Some preachers. Uh, Mormons. I entertained them here for a while, but they've gone over to the schoolhouse now. Going to preach a sermon. I've heard many sermons. What do these men profess? They said something about apostles and prophets. Where's Asma? He couldn't wait for you. But I tell you, the Lord is establishing his kingdom once again upon the earth with prophets, apostles, and all the gifts and blessings as were found in the Savior's church of old. Perhaps while reading the scriptures, you have wondered, where are the prophets, the apostles, the angels, the visions, the revelations, and the voice of God today? Some will tell you that these manifestations are unnecessary in our day and age of the world. But I am thankful and rejoice that the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ has been restored and that there is a prophet again on the earth with revelation and the voice of God heard once more by men today. I'd like to be baptized. Dear Father Mason, what glorious news. The ordinances necessary to salvation are restored in their correct form. I do not feel the cold, brother. I received the ordinances of baptism and the laying on of hands by those holding the authority, the priesthood of God, being received directly from the ancient apostles. And say unto you, receive the Holy Ghost. I know for myself that God has established through Joseph Smith the prophet, the true church of Jesus Christ upon the earth, and I have united with it. I feel my mind is engaged in a glorious work. In it I'll live, and in it I'll die. I have found the kingdom. May Almighty God permit you His presence and prepare you for His kingdom and coming is the prayer of Wilfred Woodruff.